What is up you guys? Welcome back to another video. If you guys are new here, hi I'm Kai. I do all types of lifestyle videos and one thing I love is Disney. I am a Disneyland Magic Key pass holder and I love it. But this video is going to be about Disney World because I'm a huge planner. I'm the kind of person that researches. I look for everything. I need to know all the details. And I feel like Disney World planning is a whole different ball game. Like there's a lot going on in terms of Disney World and I wanted to make it simple because like I said, I've been there twice. I went once before, I want to say 2016 or 2017. And then I went last year, which I have a whole vlog. You guys want to check that out. Both times I went in September, I went in Labor Day and y'all, let me tell you, I still had fun and it still all worked out. I went on all the rides I wanted. That is the reason I wanted to make this video is that I feel like sometimes people that like especially that are like frequent Disney World people I feel like they sometimes scare a lot of people that are planning their trip because they're like if you do this your trip will be ruined or if you don't do this your trip will be ruined or don't go during this time or go to during this other time I feel like there's a lot of information out there and again it's a very overwhelming so I want to make it very very simple especially so you can enjoy your trip because again this is your trip and as long as you enjoy it everything will work out so I don't want to make this intro too long because there's a lot to talk about so let's get into it first things first before you plan a disney world trip is find out your non-negotiables i feel like people always forget this is that disney world is huge like honestly even if you're there for a week there's gonna be stuff that you probably won't do so figure out what are your non-negotiables and be realistic i definitely wanted to do so many things like i wanted to do beer guests and then cinderella's royal table like i'll get there for uh, some other points you'll see this kind of happen but you got to be realistic with your time your energy all of those things energy up expectations low type of situation but check out what you want to see is there holidays that you want to be there around if weather is really important to you again Florida weather can be a little intense. It is so humid out there. It is hot. If that's something that you don't want to be there for, check out the weather. If you don't want to be there when there's like severe rainstorms, which it's Florida. Again, if there's any festivals, like I know they do food and wine, they do have the flower and garden one. If there's any festivals that you want to be there around, if there are specific hotels that you want to stay at, make sure you figure out your non-negotiables at first because then that will help you plan your trip around something that you actually want to do. And again, you probably won't do anything, which sounds scary, but don't worry, like you'll still have tons of fun. I added this for non-negotiables, but this can be applied to everything make sure to stick with your budget i feel like again i'll get into it with other points is that so many people will suggest like you have to do this one thing and that's gonna make your trip perfect but sometimes it might be out of your budget and that's okay don't freak out if you're not able to do that one thing everyone's suggesting again i'll get into it especially with like in terms of dining rides all that stuff because i feel like again with disney world that's something that i see often or like when i was planning my trips it's like you have to do this one thing and it just didn't fit into like my schedule it just wasn't something that i was interested in i was out of my budget and i was like you know it's fine it's okay i'm still gonna have a fun trip and i did have a fun trip so again keep those things in mind and i guess a little sub note with that i will say that disney world has a lot of specials so if you guys go on their website i think it's in things to do or places to stay there's like a little tab that says special offers click that honestly they'll have very good offers a lot of their offers is definitely like if you stay this amount of days it'll be cheaper type of situation they have a lot of those or like if you stay during these days it's cheaper and now we're gonna get into hotels because i think hotels is like a big thing especially if you're coming out of town like i said i am a disneyland girly in southern california no matter where you live i feel like most people will just drive to disneyland even if they're like in san diego or like la area like i feel like here it's like in a prime spot in anaheim where everything's kind of close-ish enough so i feel like hotels here are like a big thing as they are in disney world and i think one of the things with disney world is that you kind of have to figure out what kind of things that you want from your hotel like i said this is going to be a big point in terms of what i'm saying of stick with your budget and just do what works best for you instead of listening to people would say i'm gonna get into it a lot more into this point but definitely check out if like do you want to stay within the disney bubble do you want to have something more affordable outside are you going to rent a car are you going to go to universal there's a lot of things that you need to check out. Again, this all goes into like figuring out those little details first before you get into planning. But if you do stay in the Disney bubble, they have three different type of like hotel categories. There's value, moderate, and deluxe. So value ones are I guess the, are the more affordable options. They have all the all-star, all-star movies, music, sports. They have pop century and art of animation. I've stayed at all-star music and I've stayed at all-star movies and y'all, I loved it. I had so much fun. And again, this goes back to saying because like everyone's going to suggest for you to stay at like one of these deluxe hotels, which are great. Don't get me wrong. They're beautiful, amazing. But if it's not with your budget, 
All stars are just great hotels. You still get all the Disney perks. You still have all the Disney vibes. The only amenities they really have, like a food court, they have the pool. They just have a little shop with like souvenirs which is actually great because it's like a lot of the park souvenirs. Like obviously not a huge collection, but it's still nice that like you can grab something there. And they obviously they have like the hotel stuff, like deodorants and drinks and snacks. So I feel like if you don't really care, because again, if you're going to be in the parks the whole day like, and you don't really care where you're going to stay, All Stars are a great option. I'm not going to lie, I am trying to plan another trip back. There's nothing set in stone, but I'm just having ideas. And I do want to stay at like maybe like Pop Century next time. It's still a value resort and it's still great. I still like the amenities. I'm definitely not going to be the person that's going to stay around my resort all that often. So if that's something that you also don't care about, like you're like, I'm going to be in the parks. They're great options. Again, this is one of those things that I was saying. So many people kind of look down on like All Stars being like a value, but honestly, as long as I'm at Disney World and I'm still getting all those perks that you get being at a Disney hotel, I'm fine. I will rather pay for the cheaper option. They're still great. They're still very clean. When I went in September 2023, again, I have the blog. If you guys want to check it out, my sister actually upgraded us because it was my sister, me, and my niece. She actually upgraded our room to a family suite, which was so nice of her, just so we can all have like our own like space to move. So I do have a room tour for that if you guys want to check it out. But honestly, all the rooms are great. I fully vouch for All Stars. They're great options. And then I'll get into like all what you get with hotels in general in terms of perks and being in the bubble. I'll get into that in a bit. But then following up is Moderate, and I'm going to read them out because from here on out, they're going to get longer lists. So for Moderate, there's a Caribbean Beach Resort, Coronado Springs, Port Orleans French Quarter, Port Orleans Riverside, and the cabins at Disney Forts Wilderness Resort. So again, this is kind of like the mid-tier. They're not going to be super affordable, but they're not going to be super expensive. I have heard great things about Port Orleans and the Coronado Springs Resort. So definitely check those out. Again, a lot of it just kind of depends what kind of amenities you have. Also, something very important is that if you stay within the Disney bubble, a lot of these hotels are located in different areas of the bubble. So when you look at the website, it will tell you this is going to be in like the Disney Springs area or this is going to be more in the Animal Kingdom area, which I'll get into in transportation in a bit. I feel like all of these things build upon each other. It might not be that big of a deal in case you want to be somewhere quicker. You kind of have to use that in terms of planning. Again, it's a little confusing now, but we'll get into it more so for transportation. All Stars, for example, are more in the Animal Kingdom area. And usually your first park of the trip is always Animal Kingdom. And it always works out because all hotels have buses to the park. So you don't have to worry about that. And our drive is always like the quickest because it's like in that area already, which is really nice. So that's something to keep in mind. But yes, these are the mid-tier. They might have a little bit more amenities. Some have access to the Skyliner. Some have access to the monorail. All those things. Again, if that matters to you, definitely check that out. And then we have the Deluxe. So there's Deluxe and then there's the Deluxe Villa. So I'm going to read the Deluxe and then the Deluxe Villas. Let's go. So for Deluxe, there's Wilderness Lodge, Contemporary Resort, Grand Californian, Polynesian Village, Animal Kingdom Lodge, Beach Club, Yacht Club, and Boardwalk Inn. And then for the Villas, it's the Villas at Disney Grand Californian, Bay Lake Tower at the Contemporary, Boulder Ridge Villas, and Copper Creek Villas at Wilderness Lodge. Disney's Animal Kingdom Villages, the Jumbo House and Kidani Village, Beach Club Villas, Boardwalk Villas, Old Key West Resort Villas, Polynesian Villas and Bungalows, Riviera Resort Villas, and Saratoga Springs Villas. So again, these deluxe ones are the most expensive ones, but they will have the most amenities. For example, the best one to point out is Contemporary Resort. This one is literally walking distance from Magic Kingdom. This one also has like the monorail that goes through it. So this one's like a prime hotel to stay at these deluxe hotels will also have like actual restaurants within them the other ones just have kind of like a food court where you can just go get a train and get out what you want but these deluxe ones will have like actual restaurants like you'll have different options to sit down you do have options to just like grab and go breakfast contemporary has chef mickey's which is one of the most iconic restaurants i guess in disney world so if that, again that's something that you want definitely go for it i'm pretty sure contemporary and grand californian and these kind of hotels do have like gyms they have more spaces like business centers more things like that i feel like it's going to depend on your budget and like what you really want from a hotel because even if you don't stay at these hotels you can go to those restaurants and eat anyway contemporary has like restaurants which if you time it right you can like be in there while 
while the fireworks are happening and you don't have to be a guest at that hotel you can book a reservation no matter what like for example hana is another iconic restaurant i believe that one's at the polynesian let me just double check yes that one's at the polynesian village again that one's like another iconic restaurant you can just still book these even if you don't stay there so there's a lot of hotels for you to choose from and if you want to stay in the disney bubble that's perfect you have options just check out like basically what fits your budget and what kind of amenities that you're like okay with having for example i don't really go in the pool i don't go into any pools actually so pools are just not my thing but like i don't care for that so i'm just like eh, whatever technically all resorts have a pool even the valley one so that was a weird example but you know basically check what you want and one of the pros of staying at a disney hotel no matter which you choose all of them get these perks the main perk is that you get early access to the parks so for example if the park opens at eight you'll be able to get in before that and you'll be able to get into some rides already and that helps a lot if you want to get as much done with your day for example magic kingdom i believe that when i was there it opened at nine so i woke up at seven to get technically i woke up at 6 50 because at seven i needed to get in a tron virtual queue and i got a good group amazing i feel like magic kingdom buses also start running a lot earlier because it's like the one everyone wants to go to so we went straight to the buses got to the park we did wait a bit to get scanned in but they usually scan you in and then you do kind of have to wait i will say that not everything is open for early entry it's usually like some areas so for magic kingdom it was only Fantasyland and tomorrowland which honestly is still very helpful for example with the early times i was able to do mine train and space mountain without having to do like genie or anything so it's very very beneficial for like getting more stuff out of your day because you'll be able to like just do them like right away literally like my train was just like walk on sure it looks a little intense because you see so many people and you're like oh my gosh but no like it was really easy to just get in on again all the parks have this option so if you want to go into epcot you want to go into animal kingdom and knock things out you will be able to the only thing that i guess is the con for that is that you kind of have to check what areas are open in those parks because again they don't open all the park at once they just open certain areas but it's honestly such a great perk to have and another thing is that you have already transportation from your hotel to the park all the disneyland hotels do this and i think it's so cool once you see there like especially when you get out of the park they have all the stalls follow where your hotel is which is honestly super fun walking to where your hotel like stop is and then just waiting for the bus but each hotel has buses that will take you to each of the parks and then the water parks and then also to disney springs disney springs if you guys don't know it's like their shopping area and again it's super convenient because you don't have to think about like transportation within the park that's a whole issue if you're driving there or you're flying there all of those things for me i obviously flew there i only needed transportation from the airport to the hotel and like that's it i basically use the disney buses the whole time i was there because i was just staying within the bubbles i guess one of the cons is that there may be other places that are cheaper to stay at that are not in the bubble i know people that are planning the trip that are staying like at other hotels that are not disney hotels and obviously they're doing that because it's more affordable and that's okay it all depends on like what genuinely works for your budget and honestly just enjoy your trip i feel like this all is going to come down to to not care what people say and try to impress them with how cool your trip is as long as you enjoy your trip it's going to be a great one also if you see me moving a lot it's because the sun is shifting so yay so let's talk about the parks there's magic kingdom there's epcot animal kingdom and then hollywood studios so i will talk about like the main things in each of them or not like all of the things because they're huge parks okay <laughs> obviously for magic kingdom it's the one with the castle you can have the castle and it's gonna be so magical this one has mine train and that has a tron ride space mountain it's obviously gonna have now the tiana's bayou adventure that is that park epcot is the one with the giant thing that looks like a golf ball that one now has the guardians ride but that also has a ratatouille ride it has the frozen ride it also has a new moana section which i haven't experienced but if that's something you want to do check it out then there is animal kingdom which i'm not gonna lie animal kingdom is one of my favorite parks of all including california side okay but i love animal kingdom animal kingdom is the one that has all the avatar pandora stuff flight of passage is one of my favorite rides ever i really really enjoyed it it also has expedition everest which is also my favorite ride ever animal kingdom has the safari there's like the whole debate of like whether it's like a half day park or not i feel like if you have early morning and you plan it well you might be able to get the park done pretty quickly and then hollywood studios is the one that has galaxy's edge toy story land they have mickey minnie's runaway railway they have rock and roller coaster there 
So that is that part. So let's talk about dining because I feel like dining is one of those things that's also very important in terms of your trip itself. There's a lot that goes into dining and I feel again when you start planning and you start researching, dining is like one of those things so many people talk about because again Disney World has so many cool restaurants and they're opening new restaurants constantly. Like they opened that cool restaurant in Epcot which I do want to go there if I go again which is kind of like it looks like you're in space which is amazing like that's so cool so there's a lot of restaurants there's obviously the ones everyone knows about like your guest i mentioned chef mickey's earlier obviously cinderella's royal table which you can eat inside of the castle there's almost so much to do i'm not gonna lie dining is honestly just gonna depend on you and whoever you're going with something that i did my first time and i feel like again this goes back to like when you're researching and you're like oh my gosh i have to do all of these things is that i honestly wasn't able to do all of these things i had booked originally all my reservations and i was like yeah i'm gonna eat here and do this and then i realized that you know the time difference affected me because obviously i'm going from california to florida time difference was way different there was times over there that i booked breakfast and i just wasn't hungry because it was in time that i usually ate so i was like shoot i would cancel reservations because i was like oh man like i'm not gonna eat like i'm generally not hungry don't mind me i just moved my whole camera angle because the light is just there's a tree outside my window it doesn't work well but yes back to dining i think that's also another tip that i feel like a lot of people don't talk about make sure you actually plan you're eating according to when you actually eat and this is again mostly for people that travel from outside and have like different time zones because again that's what i noticed there was a lot of times that i that I had reservations and i just wasn't hungry so i had to like cancel them and honestly i, I was okay with it because i was like, you know what i'm gonna force myself to eat with dining i think you should just check on what you want to do do you want to do character dining? Do you want to sit down dining? Do you want to just try all the snacks that are around? Because again, Disney World has a lot of snacks. It's going to depend on like what you generally want to eat. Again, there's a lot of great people that give a lot of great recommendations online. I'm not saying that they don't. Don't feel like if you don't eat at those certain places that your trip is ruined. You can eat anywhere and you'll still enjoy it. Back to reservations, make sure you're reserving stuff when you're actually going to eat. Don't reserve things too close together because again, that's another thing that I've done wrong. Even here at Disneyland, I have a vlog because I stayed at the Grand California for my birthday and I had bugged too many things like close together. I did the Magic Terrace and then I did the restaurant at Grand Californian and I only gave myself like a two, three hour gap, which is not enough. I was definitely still full. So again, this was one of those things to think about. Make sure that you have enough time between food. If it's not gonna take too much time from your day in terms of like what you're doing throughout the day, how many rides you're getting in. It, it is, I will say it's a lot to think about, but it'll help out in the long term. You do have to have some wiggle room. And again, this is what I'm saying to just kind of be realistic. Sometimes you're just gonna be tired and you just gonna wanna sit somewhere and eat like a treat, you know? Just be okay with that. My very first trip, I did eat at Be Our Guest. Honestly, it's okay. I did do the quick service option. It was okay. If they allow you to walk inside, I would just suggest doing that and eat elsewhere. My first trip, I also did this dessert party for the fireworks, which was honestly super fun. Last time when I did it, again, this was before 2020, they did allow you to choose what you wanted like it was like more like a buffet style i know here at disneyland the dessert party for world of color and now better together they do just give you like a plate like it's a pre-plated i believe that disney world still has the like buffet style option and honestly it was great like, i feel like i didn't regret it again it's like one of those things that you will have to figure out on like what do you want to splurge on because i was okay with splurging on that because i was not gonna wait in the crowd for fireworks i knew that i wanted to see the fireworks but i was like you know what? i'm gonna pay this upcharge because i do not care I'd rather sit in a table so again check those little like up charges if you're what you're okay with but this last trip i feel like we ate a lot at our hotel actually we were staying at all star music and we just enjoyed the little food court there the first day we did go to eat at disney springs because we did have our niece with us we ate at rainforest cafe which was actually so packed keep that in mind if you want to eat at rainforest cafe literally had like a two hour wait and we literally had to ask like can we just at least sit in the bar and like sure that's like fine and then other than that we really didn't eat much again going back to like my timing the second day we were there we were in magic kingdom we didn't grab anything to eat 2 p.m orlando time because again at that time i was like finally getting hungry like my normal time and we ended up just getting like a pretzel which was honestly really good but we didn't eat much at the parks either because again we were just weren't really in the mood for anything at the moment let's talk about transportation 
Like I said, the Disney World hotels have buses that transfer you from the hotel to the park, which is so nice. They started updating it now where it actually has like the wait time. So you'll be like, oh, this bus is coming in like these many minutes, which is again, another thing that's super nice. So you don't have to worry about that if you stay within the hotels. Within the Disney World hotels, you don't have to worry about getting to the parks. There's always buses. They do start running an hour or so before the parks open. The Magic Kingdom one, I will say starts running earlier this past time i'm pretty sure we went down to like the buses at 7 30 and there was like already a bus full like leaving definitely check according to when you're going and what time the park opens and then ask you can ask someone and they'll tell you when the buses start running but you have those again if you stay there you don't have to worry about that there's the skyliner some hotels have access to the skyliner like direct access for example pop century is one of those that has a skyliner access so if you stay there you can use the skyliner it doesn't go to all the parks so again that's something to keep in mind if you're like oh i want to use skyliner like it wouldn't take you to animal kingdom you know but the buses take you to all of the things obviously there's like the monorail there's ferries there's obviously so many forms of transportation it does kind of depend on like what hotel you stay at and like what area you're at i'm using all star because it's what i know like all star doesn't have access to like the ferry because we're not near them we don't have access to the Skyliner because again, we're not in that area. They do have minivan which is powered by Lyft So if you download Lyft once you're within the area of Disney World They'll give you the minivan option and basically it's like you're getting a Lyft, but it's a minivan I think it's very cleverly named but basically it's like a dedicated van for you again like a Lyft It will just take you within Disney World bounds i did budget in my last trip like just in case we needed it because again if you're leaving during like peak hours like let's say you're leaving magic kingdom after fireworks it's gonna be packed every time i've been to disney springs regardless of which all-star i stayed at the bus took forever to get there like to pick us up to take us back to the hotel minivans are a great option it is obviously a nub charge you do have to pay for this but like let's say you're like i do not want to wait i just want to go to my room now you can pay that it's like ride sharing pricing it'll be depending on like the time the hour all of that stuff but that's an option and it'll just be within disney world bounds and something that's also very important is to plan for delays because again like i said sometimes buses come super quick and you're like back where you need to be super quickly sometimes they take a while because again it's big resorts there's a lot of people for example my last trip i was leaving animal kingdom there was a bus that was actually there for another all-star resort but since there wasn't that many people the guy was just like you know what i'll drop you guys off as well because there was a couple of people on my line but like just plan for any type of situation and this goes back to like reservations in general give yourself a lot of time like i'd rather you guys be there early than be there late make sure that you are getting everywhere with ample time because you just never know if it's gonna be like a slow day if it's gonna be a crowded day there's always a lot of things to think about plan for delays which i know sounds so tiring to plan for delays but it's better to have wiggle room than not you know here's gonna be some more like random tidbits now rope drop if you guys don't know what rope drop is there's a little rope when you go to the parks when it opens like before it opens again if you have early access they'll tell you exactly the areas you need to go but if you don't have early access they have areas that are roped off they'll let you within main street for example in magic kingdom even if you aren't staying at the hotels they will let you in earlier into the park but you just can't go past these roped off areas and that's what people call rope drop basically what rope dropping is is that you're there once the park opens and they drop the rope and you can go into wherever you want usually what people like about rope drop is that you are able to get so many things done early in the morning because there's less people there which is why rope dropping has become so much more popular because it's like you get there early and you're able to get so many rides in for example the last time i rope dropped here at disneyland i was able to do indiana jones smugglers run rise of their assistance pirates all within the first few hours of my trip that was super nice that's also why rope dropping is such a big thing it just means get there early once they literally open the park officially so like let's say the park opens at 8 you'll be able to get in by like 7 30 and you'll be able to wait there until they drop the ropes now the big thing genie plus so obviously they got rid of the normal fast passes you can't get paper fast passes anymore it's a whole thing genie plus is on the app basically you have to pay for genie plus it helps you plan your day you can tell it like these are the things i want to do and it will tell you the times those will be available if you want to see some characters i'll tell you where to see some characters but then this gives you access to what is the fast pass 
now called Lightning Lane. So obviously this is something you do have to pay for now. Again, it sucks. It's another payment, but you have to pay for this. You have to pay for each person in your party. I suggest doing this before seven if they allow you. I forget how I did it when I was there. I had bought it before I was even in that park because I wanted to make sure I was ready to go, had everything ready, all of those things. You do have to pay. Again, it's Lightning Lane now. I will say that not every ride is on there. They do have more of like the ones everyone goes to. However, like the super, super new rides, they do have a separate charge as well. So yes, you pay for Genie, you pay for Lightning Lane. However, for example, Tron, if you want to ride Tron, it is not part of the Lightning Lane options you will have to pay another extra amount to ride tron if you're not in a virtual queue again that's only if you didn't get a boarding group with a, the virtual queue this is if you're like i want to for sure fast pass that's a separate price again it sucks more money but essentially fast pass works how it always been it's just now that I have to pay for it and now it's on the app which all of these things sucks I feel like you have to spend so much time on your phone which is not my favorite some accounts that I will suggest that you follow one of my absolute favorites is a Disney food blog one they talk a lot about food I'm more of a snacker when I go to the parks even here at Disneyland I just like snacks so they definitely post all the stuff that is new you'll see a lot of the news once it breaks if you just want to know in the know new stuff I really like their channel. I usually put their YouTube videos like in the background just like as a relaxing thing. They're more like informative videos and they're more like chill vibes instead of being like this high pace vlog. I have heard people say that they like Mammoth Club a lot. I haven't checked out their videos. I think I've only checked out once because I was like interested in the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween videos. But if you guys want to check them out, I heard great things about them. Another person that I suggest you follow is Scott Gustin. He's actually more of a reporter. However, he'll have like the most up-to-date Disney news of all time in real time. So if you want to know anything super quick, he's a great person to follow. So that is it. I hope this was helpful for you guys. Again, these are the things that I kind of go through when I'm starting to plan a trip. I usually check out when I'm going to be there, what hotel I want to stay at, how much I want to spend, all of that stuff, and just kind of go from there. If anything you take from this video is honestly plan the trip that you generally enjoy. Everyone's gonna give recommendations. I didn't give a lot of recommendations because again, there's things that I like doing that I know other people don't like doing and that's okay. Recommendations are great, but don't feel like you have to do those recommendations that everyone's suggesting to have the perfect trip. You can have a perfect trip however you want to plan it. I hope this was helpful. The lighting was not in my favor, but it's okay. But if you guys have any questions, let me know down below. If there's anything you guys want to learn more about or are you confused about, let me know down below as well. I will try to answer as much as I can. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, and drop some questions or suggestions or even if you have suggestions if you've been to Disney World and you were like I think people should do this thing drop it down below let the people know that is it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed it don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe again I do all types of lifestyle videos and I do a lot of Disney videos again I'm more on the Disneyland side so if you guys want to see Disneyland vlogs I do plenty of those so I hope you guys enjoy this and I'll see you guys later